السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹ آئی یور جوگرافی ٹیچر سلیم علی فرام اقرا اے پی ایس کمانڈ ان اسٹاف کالج کوئٹا ٹوڈے آر ٹاپک از ایلیمنٹس آف ویدر دا سب ٹاپکس آر ٹیمپریچر ایئر پریشر اینڈ ایٹماسفیرک مائسچر آر آبجیکٹو از دیٹ اسٹوڈنٹ ول بی ایبل ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دیٹ وائی دیئر آر ویریشن ان ٹیمپریچر سیکنڈ واٹ از دا رول آف ایئر پریشر اینڈ ایٹماسفیرک مائسچر ان آر لائف So first we discuss about the temperature. Everything living, non-living thing in this world has temperature. But here we talk about the temperature of the weather. So temperature is, temperature refers to the degree of the hotness or coldness of the air. The temperature of surrounding varies from place to place. So what is the causes of this thing we are going to know. First we take cities versus villages cities have more buildings and paved surface such as roads which absorb, absorb more heat than surface covered with trees grasses and bare soil in villages hence they tend to have high temperature in the city second mountain versus lowland you may have learned that it is colder on mountains than on lowland or you may have experienced it as you move up a highland the earth's atmosphere contains gases known as known as greenhouses uh, greenhouse gases which absorb the heat of from the sun the gases are denser nearer to its surface due to the pull of gravity Hence, most of the heat is absorbed near the surface. That's why the Earth's surface also gives off heat in a form of geothermal. On mountains, there is less water vapors and other gases to absorb the heat. Hence, the temperature is low in the mountain. Now, second is day versus night. Before going to understand the day versus night, first we go to know the the what is solar radiation and terrestrial radiation so the sun gives off energy to the earth as you see in this figure the sun gives off energy in the form of solar radiation 55 percent of uh, radiation received by the earth and its atmosphere is reflected while the remaining 45 percent is absorbed the radiation that is absorbed in Con is converted into heat the earth itself emit heat given off as terrestrial radiation the amount of heat gained from solar radiation is about equal to the amount of the heat lost through the terrestrial radiation in this figure you can see the sun rays and these uh, things as a heat of the earth as a terrestrial radiation so how the uh, temperature of the day and night is different from each other during the day solar radiation exceeds terrestrial radiation and earth surface becomes warmer at night no solar radiation is received and the surface of the earth cools it cools until about an hour after sunrise shortly after the sunrise solar radiation is received and the surface of the earth gradually becomes warmer in some places the day and night temperature difference can be very big sometimes 10 degrees centi celsius or more in the desert for example the day temperature can be as high as 40 degrees celsius but at night it falls below 0 degrees celsius we will discuss this thing again and more for more clarity watch the link here as a critical thinking think student that does the present lockdown lessen the global warming this is your textbook page picture which is given as a resource page as well So now let's talk about the air pressure. Air pressure is constantly rushing all direction ups down and sideways with the force. This force that exert on the surface of the earth is called air pressure. So air pressure is greatest at sea level 
it decreases as we go higher up with because uh, the air becomes thinner there so air pressure also changes with the temperature when the temperature is high the air heats up expand and rises up the area at which the heating takes place will have a low pressure now look at this figure region b when in the region b the ground gets heated the area above it gets heated as well and then due to low density it rise up and there will become a vacuum so that area of low pressure now develops as air rising from surrounding areas cold wind will rush to fill this place as you see in this picture okay now this low pressure place filled by the cold wind and the hot wind rise up in the air as the warm air rises here at this position here it lose its temperature or its uh, warmness then it cools then due to the cooling condition the cold air then sinks as it is dense condition then it sinks in the region b so an area of high pressure develop as the cold air sank in region a so this is the sign of a sign of pleasant air uh, pleasant weather in the region a while in the region b is the sign of a strong uh, heavy wind or stormy wind etc the difference between a and b region causes the cold air to rush in as wind wind moves from an area of high pressure now see in this figure moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure here in the low pressure wind heat it up went uh, 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 up and then cool down there and then in the region a now it sank in the region a okay student this picture is your homework please draw this picture in your notebook now we talk about more about the air uh, atmospheric uh, moisture atmospheric moisture also known as the amount of humidity in the air the amount of humidity or moisture present in the air or in the atmosphere is called atmospheric moisture now let us see suppose this is a uh, humidity and this is the temperature so remember how temperature and humidity are closely related as you increase the temperature the amount of humidity also increase as you decrease the temperature the amount of humidity also decrease as you uh, decrease this experiment you can observe in the summer and winter season when wet cloth you put on the wire so due to the high temperature humidity uh, range is also more and in the winter season because the wind is or the weather is already moist so that's why temperature is low the so wet cloth will not dry up quickly this is the same uh, table in your textbook express explain this figure so a student to find out where the water is from let's take a closer look at what is in the air around us the air is like a sponge and can hold moisture in the form of water vapor we can see the rain but we cannot see the moisture in the air this is because the moisture in the air 
is in the form of water vapor and it is called atmospheric moisture the amount of water vapor the air can hold depend on its temperature the higher the air temperature the more water vapor it can hold while the lower the air temperature the lower the amount of the water vapor it can hold as at given the temperature in this figure and humidity as well the air can hold a maximum amount of water vapor when the maximum amount is reached the air is said to be saturated in this figure you can see and this table is uh, explained in this way that as you increase the temperature the amount of water vapor uh, will uh, be raised as you decrease the temperature water vapor also decreases so the amount of humidity depends on the amount of temperature in the air let's take a look again more closely humidity the amount of water vapor in the air is called humidity and the air reach at its saturation point when air is unable to hold any more water vapor so warm air can hold more water vapor cold air hold less water vapor so relative humidity expressed in percentage by amount of water by uh, water vapor by the amount of air could hold and relative humidity is that by adding more removing water or adding water change the temperature lower the temperature increase in relative humidity as you see in this picture as well the first sponge you see that there is more absorption of water it means that 100% water vapor is remaining to be absorbed in the first sponge in the second sponge 50% water absorbed and 50% cap capacity left so that's why it, this is called relative humidity and the third sponge reached at its saturation point now there is no more capacity to hold more and more water that's why water droplets start coming out from the third sponge now see what is the dew drop high dew point temperature is equal to moist air like in this figure in the valleys low land and low dew point temperature is equal to dry air like in the desert areas or where, where there is no vegetation because there is no transpiration from the trees because tree as well release water vapor that is called transpiration so now student let's see how we measure the humidity we measure the humidity by two instrument that the first is hair hygrometer and the second is slank psychrometer these have uh, carry two bulbs uh, one dry and one wet means maximum temperature and uh, minimum temperature Ma maximum temperature means ke when there is no moisture and minimum when before the sunrise and after the sunset now let's take a look of the summary of this topic we learned about the temperature which refers to the hotness or coldness of the air the sun gives off energy in the form of solar radiation second air is constantly rushing in all direction 
and exerting force on the surface of the earth that is called air pressure. Then we learned about the moisture in the air in the form of water vapor is called atmospheric moisture. The new vocabularies also we learned from this chapter solar radiation, terrestrial radiation, atmospheric moisture, relative humidity, saturation point, evaporation and meteorological station. Meteorological station the where the weather forecast record. Your project work is that learn about the instrument that are found in the meteorological station search from the net and proper way the proper way in which they are placed and how weather forecast is carried out. Your activity is given here as well as this activity must be done under the parental guide and in the in your resource page also this activity has given to observe the process of evaporation.